Uh, right, good morning. And uh, I must apologise because I completely forgot that I was doing this. So let's see if I can deliver the perfect 10 minutes and follow all the stuff that I share with you during the other meetings. So, uh, Energy Centric, we are an energy department for medium to large clients. Although we can deal with the smaller clients like shops and kebab shops, it's really the medium to the large, larger size that we deal with. And the concept is to outsource their energy. So if you think about an energy department, there will be three disciplines that the department will deal with. So the first one is procurement. So somebody in the Tesco's energy department will be a specialist in procurement and he'll understand the right day to buy the electricity and gas. And that's the first skill that we have at Energy Centric. The second discipline will be the validation of bills. 33% of all bills in the UK are wrong. That's a bit scary because you only get four at home, one a quarter, and 33% of those are going to be wrong. So somebody inside Tesco's would be validating the bills to make sure that the uh, invoiced amount for the electricity and gas is exactly the right amount. And again, that's a skill that we, that we possess. And the third one, because the cheapest kilowatt is the one you don't use, somebody would be responsible for the management and the reduction of of, of electricity and, and, and gas because by, by reducing it. So, take Tesco's, 28,000 stores um, split into three areas. You've got Tesco's Metro and the, uh, and the petrol stations. You've got distribution and head office. You've got stores uh, and inside the stores you've got the small stores and you've got the, the out of town stores. If we now take that back into a medium-sized company, and I'll choose Brentwood Council as a, as, a, as a working model, we deal with all of the energy for Brentwood. So inside Brentwood, I work with uh, the financial director and the head of the council twice a year where we make buying decisions based on the market. So what we do is we work with, with the council to predict what the cost of gas and electricity is going to be sometime in the future and then depending on their risk versus certainty strategy we will then go and buy some electricity and gas for them. Once we've bought it that price is fixed so we might buy 2017 to 2018 so the council have got absolute certainty today on that cost of electricity and gas and then what they can then do of course is they can then take that from the council tax that we all pay if you leave in Brentwood. When it comes to the validation of bills, what happens is the council will receive the bills from the supplier in the normal way, but an electronic version of that is passed by the supplier to us, and we have our own computer system. So some of you know I used to run a, uh, a software business, so we wrote our own systems uh, 10 years ago, and um, our systems now validate something like 6 million lines of, of data a month. So the data will come in from all the different energy companies and then our system will look for any anonymous. So we're looking for consumption issues, we're looking for meter read issues, we're looking for the price per kilowatt to be different. We work to a four decimal place, so uh, sometimes that gets transposed when somebody human sticks it in. And then lastly, the energy management side. So uh, Brentwood Council have a huge amount of housing stock. They own golf courses, they've got the public toilets, they've got the Christmas lights, they've got the clock in the middle of, of Brentwood. And all of this is ticking away and every day more and more kilowatts are being used. So we work with uh, a couple of specialist firms that, that will, will then look at changing light bulbs to LED, look at putting timers on. So in the toilets in Brentwood now, they've got automatic light systems rather than leaving the lights on. And that saves something like £300 a year. So it, it, it's small, small wins, but certainly there. Now, the government has uh, decided to stick a new level of tax on all businesses in the UK that employ more than 250 employees. And this, I guess, would have escaped you. It's called ESOS. So it's a European, derivative, uh, a European initiative. And the idea is that any company with 250 uh, employees now have to run an energy audit and these energy audits are £10,000 a go so they're not cheap and um, take my biggest client he's got 10,000 properties the lead assessor who does the audit can decide how many properties he's going to audit and at £10,000 a go it doesn't take much to realise how expensive that could be this affects 14,500 customers in the UK They've got to the 31st of December to get ESOS compliant. This is all part of the third discipline of energy, energy management. If they don't 
comply by the 31st of December, it's a £50,000 fine. So how scary is that? Now, only 60 companies out of the 14,000 are compliant as of today, which is probably the most scariest figure. What's also scary is there's only 148 lead assessors uh, in the country that are qualified. So uh, 2015 is going to be an interesting one. After today's meeting, I'm off to Stratford to go and see the council and also go and see the, um, the, the uh, what's it called, the theatre there because they're going to be ESOS compliant and we're going to be using uh, some of our skills. So that's the energy department, that's how it works. I just want to show you how we sit. So this is a, this is a three-way relationship. Uh, here's the client. So this is our the client that I've just spoke about. So we'll take British, uh, we'll take Brentwood Council as our example. So this is Brentwood Council sitting here. Um, the supplier. So this is the person that physically ships the electricity and gas to the uh, to the customer. So in this example, this is a company called Opus which is uh, one of the largest independent energy companies. The reason why you won't know them is because they don't supply domestic, so they don't do the home market, but in the commercial world, they're one of the largest uh, energy providers. So the client has a direct relationship and a two-way contract with the supplier, and we don't, we don't try and interfere with that. If anything, we encourage it. So the client knows who the supplier is, he knows and who to speak to, and he has a relationship with that person. Then we sit down here, so Energy Centric sits here. We also have a two-way relationship and a two-way uh, contractual relationship with the supplier. So um, Opus are deemed to pay us for the work that we do. Uh, Bentwood Council pay about 9.2 pence per kilowatt, so they'll pay that to the supplier, and then the supplier will pass some of that money to us because part of that 9.2 pence that he pays Opus is our money. In the same way that Opus will pass some of that money to the metering people who read the meters, they'll pass it to networks and generation and the, the power stations up in Doncaster that produce the electricity. So 9.2p leaves the client to the supplier and part of that 9.2p comes, comes to us. So our business is very well uh, funded as far as lo longevity is concerned because I can buy up to five years worth of electricity to start five years ahead. So some of the trades that we're doing are for 2020 beyond, which is um, where, 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 where we are. Now, this leaves this nice little bit here. And uh, there's something like 2,000 energy consultants in the country. We're certainly in the top 10, depending on how you measure the size of the consultancy. And everybody inside the top 10 consultants, they have a contract between the client and the consultant. And when I looked at starting Energy Centric, I, I had the end in mind, and I, I felt that this was, was not the right way, because we're not supplying electricity, so why would you have a contract? And by definition, the moment you go to a contract is when the relationship is over. Um, so going back to Nexus, the moment you go to your contract to get your, to get your guarantee of your, your money, our relationship is over, so we may as well pay you and let you leave. Um, so what we did was we decided to have no contract. So our biggest client, who spends 35 million quid <coughs> on electricity, there is no contract between us and Energy Century, which means that at any stage they can leave. And this is, uh, this is an interesting one. So our, ret our retention is currently 94%, and the SWOT analysis, if you, if you think about that, the danger that we have is that any of our competitors can come in and nick any of our clients at any, any stage because there is no contract between us. Um, but what it does is it, it, it focuses the mind of all of the departments inside Energy Centric because we promise, deliver, re-promise and, and re-deliver. So that's where we are. Inside Energy Centric we have a couple of key departments I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about two. The first one is our tendering department. So this is a department that sits between the consultants and the clients. So the consultants that work for Energy Centric uh, uh, deal with the client and the tendering department sits between the consultants and the supplier and what we do there is we'll go to market we'll go and get prices uh, several times we're just doing uh, we're just doing a trade for 8 million kilowatts so 8 million times 9.2 so you can work out the cost that this is involved and this is 144 uh, sites across the UK 
and the tendering department will go to the supplier multiple times during the day to secure the right price because this price, this 9.2, will fluctuate through the day and through the season. And then the last department I want to focus on is the social media. So we have our own social media department which contains two people and inside there we publish a 12 page oil report every day. So if you ever need anything to get you to sleep then get yourself on that distribution list. Um, we produce a daily, daily market report which has all of the FTSE, all the oil, coal, gas, electricity and, and coal markets. And then the last one is we are doing something like 150 tweets a day. So if you go to Energy Centric we've got We've got 12,500 followers um, on the Energy Centric account and something like 2,000 on the individual accounts. So 14,000 people are looking at our tweets every day. Our proudest moment was where we, when we beat Bloomberg to an oil story. That was something that we were pretty, pretty proud about. But um, for up-to-date information on social media is where you want to go. So it's at Energy Centric is where you should have a look. So the ideal referral for me is anybody that uses tons of electricity or tons of gas that are not big enough to have their own energy department but understand that if you can reduce this by fractions of a penny because the volumes are so large then the actual cost over the year is, is worthwhile. And remember there's no direct relationship between us and the client so the client is always in charge, he has a relationship with the supplier, all we're going to do is tell him which day to buy it. So there you go, energy centric in a nutshell. Any questions? Firm. A client's not going to move to you unless you can show a savings. Uh, well, no, because we're not a comparison site. So if you if you think about if you think about Brentwood Council, they need energy regardless of what the consultant's going to do, yeah. and the price of electricity is the price of electricity. So uh, it's a bit like the pound versus the euro. Uh, I haven't got a special exchange rate yeah. that somebody else can have. It is the exchange rate is the exchange rate. So the cost of electricity is the cost of electricity. Um, what the consultant is doing is adding value to those three disciplines, but also predicting what day to buy it. So um, going back to the trade that we're doing this week, yeah. we'll be doing that on Thursday because there's some key announcements from the states happening on Thursday. So I know that, but as a business owner, you would not follow it. Right. So what you would do is you would just allow the supplier to go, Denise, your energy's up, yeah. sign here and you sign it blankly. So it's like capping it for me, yeah. right? so that's so, my benefit. So I can't always save people money. And in fact, uh, in fact, uh, going back to the guy that spends 35 million quid with us, he's looking at a 7% price increase this year. So work that out, it's not, uh, it's, it's a few quid. Yeah. How long is that 9.26? Uh, well, it depends. So going back to risk versus certainty, yeah. So I, the shortest term I can do is 28 days. So I can buy 28 days worth of electricity or gas to start now, and then the longest term I can do is five years. So it depends on it, and then what the clients will do is they'll have a risk strategy, so risk versus certainty. Yeah. One of my other clients is Monarch Airlines, and of course by definition an airline is a risky business, and they understand and they buy tons of diesel fuel. So Monarch are a lot more risky than Brent Council would be, because effectively they're used to that speculation. So with yeah. Monarch, I do, I do 12 month contracts, almost very close to the end of each contract. Whereas Brentwood Council need absolute certainty because they only get the money from the tax payers and it's not their money anyway. Brilliant, thanks very okay. much indeed. Thank you.